So we get a lot asked about the whole subject matter of inner conflicts. And um, <clears throat> now, first of all, many people, they don't notice that they actually do have inner conflicts. And when the inner conflicts come to the surface, then usually everybody agrees that they wish to, um, well, fix that because it's quite uncomfortable to feel that somehow different parts of our being want different things or pull towards different directions. But the first hurdle is to figure out that you do have inner conflict. Now, by the fact that you live in a dual universe, um, while actually beyond the illusion of duality, everything is one, already just that creates a ton of inner conflict. Just the fact that you um, find yourself within a dual reality while your soul is very convinced that everything is one, that will, of course, create a massive contradiction inside of ourselves. And then, from there, all sorts of conflicts arise. Of course, many of them, based on our upbringing, um, maybe um, social norms, cultural norms, uh, ways of thinking that our parents had that now contradict with our experience, contradict with how we feel inside, with maybe the intuitions of our uh, truthful nature, and also the more superficial patterns from experiences that we have had. Um, usually the symptom of an inner conflict is, um, one way or another, um, a discoherence within the being. So something just doesn't add up, and sometimes it might need the help of another person to find out what that is. Therapist, very good choice to uh, find that out um, with another being. A therapist is definitely a good person to go to. But also can be if you have a really good friend that will be reflective enough to notice when things seem to contradict within your inner universe and be straightforward enough and love you enough to point it out when you ask. But it does require, you could say, an inner research to find out what contradictions exist within your inner universe. The more you overcome inner conflict, and we'll get to that in a moment, the more coherent you will become inside. The more everything that you experience matches up with everything that you have as inner beliefs, as um, convictions, also things that you experience on the outside. There will just be less and less and less contradiction, less and less also friction between what you know, what you feel, what you see, etc., etc. The more coherence there is within the being, the more happy the being is. The more the being feels continuously integrated, continuously finding its natural spot, its um, place of belonging, of feeling home. So if any of these things that I just mentioned, they are just not something you feel very often, very li likely you have a bunch of inner conflict that needs attendance. If you feel lonely a lot, very likely you have a lot of inner conflict. If you um, notice that, um, you know, all sorts of contradictions between uh, how you feel inside and what's happening on the outside. If you feel people argue a lot with you or you argue a lot with them. If you feel that um, people, they never understand you. You feel continuously misunderstood. You feel continuously like a misfit. All of these are very good signs that you are very likely dealing with a lot of inner conflict that needs attendance and that will help you to heal all of these outer consequences as well. Of course, also, um, any type of um, mental disorder, and of course there are mental disorders that have a big genetic component to them and they might be induced in all sorts of different ways and might need very specific attendance. So this is not a replacement for therapy if you have or if you are facing some mental disorder or mental lack of health or something like that. Um, but all of these are, of course, discoherences within the being. When there is um, such an inner discord uh, that, it is, that the only way to host that inside and still at least remain with a little tiny spark of a sense of self, um, the only way to obtain that is through a mental disease, so to say. So look out and take a good um, 
inventory, if you will, of your inner universe and of your also outer experiences. Um, how often do you feel that actually you do fit in? You have a place, you have a role, you feel on purpose, you feel um, content, even if not outrageously ecstatic, but you feel content, you feel at peace. All of these are signs that inner conflict uh, starts to subside. How can we uh, deal with inner conflict? Now, first things first, of course, yoga practice, meditation practice, mindfulness practice. All of these have been proven by research to help quite a bit with dissolving um, all sorts of, um, let's say, symptoms of inner conflict, including depression, anxiety, which are, are sort of classic um, players in the whole inner conflict game. Then, once you have a good practice established, um, and please also go to therapy if that is uh, needed and find a good therapist that matches with you. Have a good, well-established spiritual practice that should have as its, let's say, central goal for you to have time with you in that day. For you to sit with yourself, to be with yourself, to feel yourself. Consciousness is one of the big components, not, maybe not even one of the, but the big component in dissolving inner conflict. Inner conflict, and therefore the dissonances and lack of coherence within the being, they always stem from a lack of consciousness in that area of the being. So someone might be very conscious when they are at work, and therefore they don't have problems at work, they don't have any tensions at work, or maybe sometimes, but they know how to handle them, and their emotions around work are pretty well managed somehow because there's consciousness within that realm of their lives. But maybe they lack consciousness when it comes to um, love relationships, to family life, to um, yeah, even just you know, being oneself when there's not something to accomplish around. And that shows that in those areas, consciousness is missing. When consciousness is present, things tend to sort themselves out. They tend to settle everything exactly in the place that it belongs to, taking an um, even seemingly intelligent matrix or structure to them. So as you attend to your inner universe by spiritual practice, eyes closed, focus inside, feeling yourself, feeling your energy moving, your chakras if you want, feeling your breath, just sitting in meditation, quiet with yourself, this is one of the major, major keys to create a greater, let's say, embrace of consciousness within your being, which tends to sort things out, put things into place. When people go to therapy, a good therapist is able to simply enlarge the scope of consciousness for the one in front of them. Simply listening, simply reflecting back. One of the big uh, therapeutic methods is to simply reflect back, to rephrase what the other one's saying. Am I hearing you right? Are you saying so and so and so? Okay, and how does that feel for you? To just simply ask questions that create consciousness within the other one, that is what therapy does. And that is what spiritual practice does as well. Journaling is a very good way to heal and deal with uh, inner conflict. As you write, you become aware, you actually pin down those thoughts that are anyways floating through your head. Just digesting, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to sell it as a novel later on, but just digesting what is going on with you, just writing it all out. There's this wonderful practice of morning pages where you simply, in the morning, write some seven to eight hundred words, just scrib scribbling it down into a notebook and just allowing whatever the subconscious wants to pour out to pour out. And the last point um, to take into consideration, in order to deal with inner conflict, you will need an immense patience. It is basically the, the gradual dissolving of inner conflict will lead you to liberation, will lead you to complete inner freedom, will lead you to integrate the entirety of every aspect within your inner universe. Eventually when that is done, when everything is coming together as one, enlightenment is reached. So have patience, but also have diligence. Practice systematically. Every day, look at yourself with honesty, with humbleness, with acceptance, and with love. And then simply 
take care of what you find within your inner universe. There's always the hope, especially of the ego mind, that somehow we can sneak our way around it. That somehow if we just blame enough people on the outside, if we just reformulate it in a certain way, if we just conceptualize like that, maybe we don't have to deal with the inner conflict. It will bite you in the butt eventually. So have patience, diligence, and a systematic approach. Loving, acceptantly cleaning up inside. It is a major, major key to happiness. And of course, it also defines the path towards enlightenment. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.